Ας περάσουμε τώρα στο επόμενο θέμα. Ο Σύνδεσμος Λευκαριτών Μεγάλης Βρετανίας διοργάνωσε για άλλη μια χρονιά σεμινάρια που αυτή τη φορά είχαν θέμα εκπαιδευτικό και απευθύνονταν σε οικογένειες και σε άτομα άνω των 13 ετών. Θέμα του σεμιναρίου ήταν η εφηβική εγκυμοσύνη. Συντονιστή τη όλη εκδήλωση ήταν ο αγαπητό φίλο του σταθμού μα και κάουνσολορ του Ένφιλτ, Γιώργο Σάβα. Στη συνέχεια ακολούθησαν ομιλίε από την Έρσα Λιβαγιάλη και αμέσω μετά ένα θεατρικό σκέτ. Στη συνέχεια ακολούθησε συζήτηση μεταξύ των γονέων, διοργανωτών και νεαρών ατόμων σχετικά με το θέμα τη εφηβικής εγκυμοσύνη. Α δούμε κάποιε από τι ομιλίε και σκηνέ από το σεμινάριο στο βίντεο που ακολουθεί. In fact, only recently we had 41,000 teenage pregnancies across the UK, across Great Britain. Um, half of them ended, unfortunately, in abortions. The previous, the previous government had a 10-year strategy to tackle teenage pregnancies and support teenage parents. Local areas, including Enfield, has had their own strategies strategies in ta on targets and targets. Whether you are a young person, a parent, a community worker, a professional, we all want to be informed and be knowledgeable and be able to help young people at a time of need. We therefore have brought together a number of professionals Uh, with the lead uh, Nersal, Maya, and uh, Antoinette, and many others. And Nersal will introduce all of them when she takes the microphone. I will now give the uh, pass on to Nersal, who will uh, direct us what uh, we are going to witness tonight. I hope you find the seminar enjoyable, informative, and uh, at the same time I would like to say th uh, thank the Greek School of St. Dimitrius and the Hetische Stavrula for, for encouraging part of the, of the, of, of the class classroom to be here with us tonight. Thank you Stavrula and Hellenic TV for covering the event which we eventually go on YouTube fairly soon. Nelson, all yours. What I would like to do uh, as a start, rather than going into a kind of slightly more boring activity like a presentation, I would like us to, uh, to play a game, um, a quiz rather. I'm just going to distribute you some papers and I'm going to test your knowledge. No, not really. Um, if you can, Uh, this is just a kind of to put us into the right frame of mind. Start thinking about teenage pregnancy, how it is in the in the UK, how it is in Enfield, where it could be, and how people think about uh, teenage pregnancy. It's just a kind of um, don't feel that you are under the pressure of an exam or a test or anything. Just kind of um, treat it as a game. Uh, within the next couple of minutes. Uh, you can talk to the person next to you. You can do it together if you want, um, because it's not a test. Um, so if you can fill out that uh, form in front of you, that would be great. And then uh, I will start answering and a presentation will follow. Okay, let's start. Number one, in 2011, how many girls under the age of 18 living in Enfield got pregnant? Um, who said 70? Who said 156? 235? 302? 365? Okay, right. Most of you thought that it is quite high. 
and the answer is 156. So not too bad, is it? But we are not complacent. Even one is too many. Number two, Enfield has the highest teenage pregnancy rate in London. Is that true or false? Uh, who said true? Who said false? Okay, it's false. It's false. Uh, Enfield hasn't got the highest teenage pregnancy rate in Enfield in, in London. In fact, it's slower than both London and, and uh, England average. Enfield has uh, lowered the teenage pregnancy rate a lot. Number three, teenage pregnancy figures only reflect the number of births to teenagers. True? Who, who said true? No. Who said false? Why is it false? Yes, well done. Do you really need a presentation, I'm wondering now? Yes, it's not just about the full-term pregnancies. It's not just about uh, births to teenagers. It's about abortions as well. In fact, abortions are bigger percentage of teenage pregnancies in Enfield and in London as well. In Enfield, it's nearly 60% of the teenage pregnancies are abortions. Number four, the girls living in Edmonton Green are blah, blah, blah times more likely to become pregnant before 18 compared to the girls living in Grange. Um, two times? Who said two times? Three times? Five times? Seven times? Eight times? Okay, seven times. Whoever said seven times, you were correct. In Edmonton Green, teenage pregnancy rate is seven times higher than Grange, unfortunately. Number five, majority of young people living in the UK do not have sex before they are 16. Who said true? Who said false? Hmm. Again, you are very knowledgeable. Yes, it is false. Most young people will wait until they are over 16. Uh, only uh, a third of teenagers actually uh, have sex before 16. So what vast majority actually wait until over 16. Uh, media, media sometimes uh, exaggerate things and then, then some people can be uh, influenced by that, but that's not correct. Most young people wait until the correct age. Number six, sex and relationships advice just encourages young people to have sex. Who said true? Who said false? Again, very knowledgeable uh, whole guests. Uh, it is false. In fact, sex and relationships advice and sex and relationships education actually educate young people, help young people so that they are able to avoid early pregnancies, so that they are able to wait until they are ready uh, for sexual activity. Well done to those girls and boys. Right, okay, this is the end of the quiz. Uh, I'm very impressed, well done. You are quite knowledgeable in the whole. Uh, actually, I didn't uh, introduce myself, although George mentioned that I am Nursal Livatyalı. Yes, uh, I am the teenage pregnancy coordinator for Enfield. I work for Enfield Council. Uh, you may have known already, but Enfield Council leads on teenage pregnancy strategy, uh, working together with all partners, uh, primarily health partners, schools, colleges, voluntary services. So we work with everybody and we try to implement our teenage pregnancy strategy primarily to reduce teenage pregnancy rate in Enfield, also to help teenage parents to avoid uh, long-term poverty and, and uh, poor outcomes for themselves. Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for coming. Is it working? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Hello. I'm going to talk to you about the different services that we have in Enfield. Um, I'm only going to briefly go through them because if you need to know more, if, if you need more information, then we have the stores here today. Okay? And also the packs that we gave you as you came in, the packs for the young people, the packs for parents, have all the information that I'm going to go through right now. Okay, I'm going to start off with one of our 
Bigger Services, which is the Shout for YP nurses, who you're going to have a workshop with today. We have Angela and Delia, if you want to give us a wave. So there will be a workshop with the two of them today for the young people. We also have the seed card, which is where young people can use this card to get free condoms around Enfield. And we also have another stand over here with Olive, who will be giving you more information if you're interested. We also have the emergency contraception scheme where young people, young women under the age of 25 can get the morning after pill for free um, in Enfield at some local pharmacies. And again, if you require any more information on this, the leaflet that you have in your bag show you the different pharmacies that you can get the morning after pill for free from. We also have a fantastic service called TextMate. Have any young people in the room heard of this? Oh, fantastic. Okay, that's good. Well, this is a free confidential service for young people where young people can text this number, which is 89868, and ask any questions to do with sex and relationships, and you're actually texting a real person. So you, any question that you ask is completely free, and you, the response you get is from an actual person texting you back. So we have an example here for you. I've had unprotected sex last night, what, what shall I do? And an actual real person is texting you back there, giving you advice and information on what to do. So I, re I recommend all young people in the room to save this number in their phone, as you never know when you might need it, and it's completely free and completely confidential, doesn't show up on your phone bill. And again, we have more information at this store over here about TextMate and in your bags. We have many um, sex and relationships education programs that go into schools where professionals go in and run some projects and programs with the young people. One of them is called the Enfield Young People's Project. Anyone in here heard of that one going into their school? No? Okay, it's where we take a group of young people and we bring them over to a nursery for the course of 13 weeks where they get to have interactive workshops, they get to work with a toddler and they get to do some um, life, life coaching, skill building workshops. So what you can see here, you can see this young person here with the toddler interacting. Again here they play, they, usually the toddler that they get to have is a toddler that has low self-esteem and over the course of 13 weeks that teenager helps build the confidence of that toddler. At the end of it, they get a certificate where they come down to the Civic Centre and we have a celebration with their parents, their school teachers for completing that journey. That was just some of the programs that we have, some of the services that we have for young people. And again, like I said, if you require more information, please come over to our stalls and we have more information for you. Just a few other things that we do. We do train all our volunteers, all our staff members in Enfield to make them feel more confident to talk to young people around this subject. We also have something for parents as well, as we know it is a difficult subject to talk to your children about, and it's called Speakeasy, and we will be running a workshop with the parents today and the parents and carers, and that will be with Bill I, who's over there. We also run many publicity campaigns all around Enfield, so in youth clubs, we have our posters, we have them in the cinemas, we have them on bus shelters, we try to get our information out everywhere and possible for young people to see. We also have support for teenage parents. So once the teenagers do become mothers, we have support. And again, we have Trisha Lewis over there, the Young Parents Project. So if you require some more information, please go over to that stand. For everything that you're gonna hear today in this room and for everything that we have over on our stalls, you can find all our information online, so www.enfield.gov.uk slash youth. Everything is on there and always updated. And it's not just a useful website for young people, it's a useful website for parents as well, for you to go in there and see what is going on for your young people, what is there for them to do. Um, also, by liking us on Facebook for YP Enfield and Youth Enfield, following us on Twitter using the same names, you can find us on there and you get all our up-to-date information. Just, just to show you here what our website looks like, it's not just about sex and relationships. There's, many, there's a lot of information on there for you know, youth clubs, where young people can go, different updates of news, our youth magazine. So it's very interactive. So I recommend young people and parents to go on, log on and have a look. And if you did want to go into more detail about everything that we spoke about today, we have our section and there's a breakdown of everything on there. 
Okay, thank you for listening. And now we've got the fun part coming up. We've got the Sex FM Theatre production. Hello, everybody. Hi, my name's Annie Small. I'm the Artistic Director of Facefront Inclusive Theatre. Now, we're actually based in Edmonton Green in the Market Square, and we've been there for over 15 years now. And what we do is we work with all ages, all abilities, um, people from different backgrounds, in order to use theatre in the process of change. Now, we have two main programmes. One is our participation programme, where we work with vulnerable young people and adults, and we give them a voice so that they can um, use drama to, to let people know about what their concerns are. And that's one of the reasons why we were very interested in working around sex and relationships, because a lot of young people did, do talk to us about, about that very subject. We also have a programme where we use theatre in schools. And we use subjects that are very difficult for teachers to deal with, so subjects where there's a lot of emotional content and also around health. And using theatre is wonderful because it engages young people. They have a fantastic time, but they're also learning at the same time. Now today, we're going to do a little excerpt from our piece, Sex FM. Now, Sex FM looks at teenage pregnancy and also sexually transmitted infections, but in the context of relationships. Often, especially for, for the parents, and I know, I know for myself, when I was at school, it was all you know, very technical. You don't, you don't have sex, basically, and you don't have sex before marriage. And if you are going to have sex, this is what you do. This is, this is contraception, and this is how sex happens. But nothing about relationships, nothing about love, nothing about peer pressure, nothing um, ab about all, all the different influences that can, can be upon a young person. <coughs> So with Sex FM, we try and work through some of the myths that young people have, and we look at relationships. Now, we're not saying to the young people, OK, go off and have sex. Absolutely not. But what we do do is give them the tools, as Nursel was saying, give them the advice, give them the tools to know how to have healthy and informed relationships and to make responsible decisions when in the future they are ready to do so. We've been doing Sex FM for 13 years. Next year is our 14th year. We keep coming back. And we've actually worked with over 60,000 young people since the year 2000. Yeah. <laughs> and so because of that, and I've been there right from the beginning, I now meet um, adults quite a few young adults. And I say to them, well, what school did you go to? And they'll say, an Enfield school. I say, do you know Sex FM? <gasps> Oh, yeah, I remember when you came to our school. Oh, it was really funny. And, oh, we, we, had, we learned all about sex and relationships. And it was the one thing I remember. And we were with them for one morning. So the impact of theatre is really, really phenomenal, as one teacher said to us. So I think theatre is a great learning tool. And I think young people agree. So I just before we show you a scene, I just wanted to let you know what some young people have said. Uh, one pupil said, I didn't know that the pill did not protect me from STIs. It's good to know these things. Um, one of the, the young people said, the characters were jokers. They really seemed like everyday teenagers. The play gave me so much jokes, I was creasing. <laughs> but I learned so much as well. A teacher said, I was really looking forward to have face front back again this year, and I was not disappointed. Your team was outstanding. They took ownership of that room of nearly 150 students and transformed it into an academy of learning. Another pupil said, it made me think how serious sex can be. And another one, I learnt not to give in to peer pressure. Now, the way Sex FN works is um, it's forum theatre. So basically, we have two stories with two sets of teenagers. It goes wrong for both sets of teenagers. One gets sexually um, transmitted infection, the other teenager gets pregnant. We then say to the young people, what could have been, happened to change this? If we were able to go back in time, what would you have said or done? Or what could the character have said or done to make a positive outcome? So it then gives the young people the opportunity uh, to rehearse what might happen in their real life. It also gives the opportunity for peers to tell other, other young people, 
this is what you could do, this is what you could say, yeah, that's okay. Don't give in to pressure, do what you want to do. So we're going to show you um, a little piece from one of the stories with two of our teenagers, um, Stacy and Slummer. And Stacy is a young person who has very low self-esteem, which is, is quite, quite common, I'm sure you, you all know. Very low self-esteem. She has to look after her brothers and sisters. She doesn't go out much, and she feels a bit strange and a bit weird with the other young people. So please, can you put your hands together for Face Run Theatre and a scene from Sex FM? Oh my days! <laughs> you are so pink! Do you reckon? Yeah, you're fit! So are you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, out of all these buff girls that I told you, you know why? Why? I'll tell you what, how about we go upstairs and I could show you, innit? Freeze! We don't want that! We don't <laughs> want to go upstairs! Okay, so, uh, what, what does Stacey want? Why did she come to the party? What does she want? Yeah. To have fun? Yeah? Is that right, Stacey? You came to have fun? Absolutely. Okay then. And um, do you think Stacey wanted to have sex? No. no. So, why did she have sex? What, what was affecting that, her decision? Alcohol. 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 Yeah, anything else? Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Yeah. Absolutely, alcohol. And why was Slammer pressurising Stacey? He had, he had pressure. His reputation. All right, so both of them are under pressure at this point. Right then, what we want to do then is we want to make a change for both these characters. So what we would do now, and what we would like to do now, is to ask for one of you to come up and to play the part of Stacy. And we want you to show Stacy how she can stay downstairs and resist the pressure from Slava. Would you like to? Yeah. 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 And the beauty of it is that the peer is teaching peers. It's not an adult saying this is how you should do it. It's often the most, you know, the, 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 the very gregarious person, the person that's got lots of friends that will come up. So, um, um, right, so you're going to play Stacey. Who are you? All right, she's Stacey. Let's get to work. Upstairs and just cool up for a minute. How about you actually age and be sensible? How about I have my age and be sensible? <laughs> no, I am being sensible. Like, this is what you do at parties, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? We have a little dance and then, like, we go upstairs and bang, innit? No, we don't go upstairs. We just chill downstairs. We don't go upstairs, we just no. chill downstairs. Yeah. No, nah, listen, yeah. My mate Rob said, yeah, right? You come to the party, you chat to the girl for about one minute, which we've done, innit? <laughs> <laughs> one minute. You chat to the girl for one minute. Yeah, that, that, that's what no. he said. That's not how it is. That's not how it is. No. I'm a girl. You're meant to get to know me. You don't take me upstairs and you do whatever you do just because your friend says. I'm a girl. I need to get to know you. I don't need to, like, take you upstairs and do what my friend says. You know what? You're kind of right, you know. That's my mate, Rob. He's a bit of an idiot. Like, so what? It doesn't really happen like that? No. So what? What am I doing wrong? Well, if you ask the girl what's her name, are you right? Okay. You come alone. Where's your friends? Alright, oh, alright, you're going a bit fast for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, alright. So, um, so, so you're saying, yeah, like, as you go up to a girl, um, as she asks her name, so, what's your name? Age. Her name, her age. Friends. Friends. Alright, alright, let, let, let me try this then. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, don't, don't bop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, just normal, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, excuse me, um, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Stacy. What's yours? Stacy, um, my name's Slammer. Slammer? Yeah. Slammer. 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 Yeah. Slammer.
What's your birth name? No, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, no, don't say that here. Um, <laughs> my, my name's Samuel. Okay! <laughs> Εδώ να σα αναφέρουμε ότι ολόκληρο το σεμινάριο θα το παρακολουθήσετε προσεχώς στην εκπομπή με το φακό του Χελένη TV.